What's up, anime fans and manga readers? Welcome back to the channel for another installment in our You Should Probably Watch series. In this video, we're diving into some fresh anime releases, discussing why we think they're worth your attention in the upcoming season. We understand that choosing a new anime can be quite a task, and that's precisely why we're here. To assist you in selecting a fantastic show that's deserving of your time and interest. Hopefully, we can introduce you to something fresh and exciting outside your usual preferences. Our pick for today is Shangri-La Frontier. Shangri-La Frontier is a Japanese web novel series penned by an author only known as Katarina. It first appeared on the novel publishing platform Shosetsuka Ni Nado in 2017 and has never been released in print format. The manga adaptation has been serialized in Kodansha's Shonen Manga Magazine and Weekly Shonen Magazine since July 2020. The series came to our attention when an anime television series adaptation produced by C2C made its debut in October 2023. And we're going to tell you why we think it's worth a watch. So what is Shangri-La Frontier about? The story unfolds in a future where classic screen games are considered retro and virtual reality or VR games have become the norm. Rakuro Hizutome is an avid trash game hunter, specializing in mastering glitch-ridden subpar games that have been rushed out by companies to chase the new VR wave. After overcoming the challenges of the expansive game Feria Chronicle Online, Rakuro faces severe burnout. Games don't excite him as much as they used to. Upon a recommendation from his favorite game store, Rock Roll, he purchases and immerses himself into the popular and high quality Shangri-La Frontier, a full dive VR game boasting 30 million registered players. Playing as a bird-headed character under the user ID Sanraku, Rakuro utilizes his skills to tackle the obstacles within the virtual realm of Shangri-La Frontier. Upon entering the game, Rakuro chooses to sell off the majority of his initial gear for extra currency, opting to keep only a pair of boxers, a bird mask, and some weapons. He becomes fully immersed in leveling up his avatar and quickly becomes captivated by the experience. However, when faced with formidable opponents, he comes to the realization that mainstream games present a more significant challenge than he had given them credit for. As Rakuro advances, he draws upon the expertise gained from his previous gaming endeavors, and soon Sunraku's distinctive playstyle begins to make waves in Shangri-La Frontier. I'm sure those interested in gaming would recognize the type. Just a few years ago, in real life, after the release of Elden Ring, a player by the name of Let Me Solo Her quickly gained popularity online by playing as a butt-naked man with nothing but a pot on his head and some underwear kicking major ass in the game against one of the hardest bosses the game has to offer. So extra points for realism, I guess. Now, I know this concept sounds familiar to older anime fans. Every fan of the medium in the early 2010s remembers Sword Art Online and the massive impact it had on the space when it first dropped. If you die in the game, you die in real life! Ah, those were the days. Despite how much of a meme it's become in recent years due to some uh, unquestionable writing choices, it laid the ground for the explosion in popularity of one of the most common trends in anime in the last decade, the stranger in the strange land, otherwise known as the isekai trope. Sword Art Online was far from the first anime to explore this trope, but when it aired, it was by far the biggest of its kind. And it was pretty unique back then too, because the other world in this context was a virtual reality video game. I'm sure you can tell where I'm going with this. Upon hearing the concept of Shangri-La Frontier, no one would blame you for comparing it to the massively popular Sword Art Online that explored similar ideas more than 10 years ago. And if you did compare them, you wouldn't be entirely wrong. However, Shangri-La Frontier does enough to distance itself from that archetype and present itself as its own unique thing. Unlike most other anime utilizing the settings of video games, Shangri-La Frontier stands out by portraying a player immersed in a video game without major real-life consequences. If he dies in the game, he doesn't die in real life, because that's not what happens when you play video games. He simply respawns and tries again. Anyone remember the movie Ready Player One? 
That's the concept we're talking about here. You can tell Shangri-La Frontier is written by someone with real passion for competitive gaming. A lot of gamers would be able to relate to Sunraku as well. He's just some guy who, having played numerous subpar RPGs, decides to try his hand at the game of the year. Shangri-La Frontier has a rich in-game lore and a realistic player base. Its narrative isn't bogged down with toxic players or griefers, it simply focuses on the main character, presenting him with unique challenges without overwhelming him. And perhaps most importantly, the protagonist finds enjoyment in the game, which should be the aim of playing video games in the first place. It seems like that should be common knowledge, but a lot of video game themed anime get so caught up in trying to raise the stakes and up the ante that they forget that the stakes of simply wanting to get good at a game are high enough. Shangri-La boasts good, fluid animation, unique character design, and inventive use of the game mechanics, making it a refreshing take on the video game genre. All in all, we strongly recommend you check this one out, as the first season is still on air. Come on, what better time is there to catch up? And that's all we have for today, folks. Do you agree with our pick? Maybe there are some really cool things about Shangri-La Frontier that I left out. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell to get regular updates on new videos. I make awesome anime and manga content like this every week, so be sure to check them out. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.